Only a handful of people from my personal life know this story, but I figured since Reddit can be pretty anonymous, I'd just make a throwaway and get it off my chest one more time. You can call nonsense on it all if you like, I really don't care what anyone has to say about it at this stage, because the truth is, I still might actually go to prison for this. You see, more than 20 years ago I used to work the overnight shift at a 24-hour gas station in a major US city, one that will remain nameless and that I do not live in anymore. As you can imagine, I've got my fair share of crazy stories from my time working there, but only one that still keeps me up at night, and that's the story of Big Sal. One of the things that kind of surprised me about working nights at the gas station was the number of regulars I'd get to know. You figure an overnight gas station would mostly get a mixed assortment of transient strangers, but for some people, mostly other night shift workers, stopping at the gas station became a regular part of their routine, especially since it was the only thing in the area that was open 24 hours. There were a couple of nurses and a few cab drivers that I used to see on the regular, but without a doubt, my favorite was Big Sal. Sal didn't get his name because he was tall. He got his name because he was wide. And most nights he'd waddle into the station, pay for his gas, then we'd shoot the breeze for a while. It was kind of annoying at first, being forced to conversate when I felt too tired to even string a sentence together. But after a while it was kind of nice to see a familiar face to break the boredom and kill some time. But then the thing that really made me like Big Sal was when he brought me a little takeout tray of some food that his wife had made. Occasionally he'd stay so long that we'd have to pause so I could serve a customer. Sometimes he'd just stand there and mind his business. Other times he'd make a face at me like, get a load of this guy, and I'd have to bite my tongue to keep from laughing out loud. But then this one time, a guy walks in to pay for his gas so Sal takes a step back from the register and politely apologizes to him. Guy says, no problem. I ring him up, then just as he's going through his wallet, Sal says, hey, don't I know you? The guy looks up, narrows his eyes a little, then innocently says, hmm, I, I don't think so. Then says something about being up on business from Missouri. Sal just kind of nods for a second, then says, What's your name? The guy stops again, gives his nervous little chuckle, then gives some plain sounding name that I can't for the life of me remember. But I do remember what Sal said next, because that got repeated over and over for the next minute or so. Sal says, Nah, that's not you. You're... And then he says a very, very Italian sounding name, and accuses the guy of having worked with a friend of his in another large city nearby. Again, the guy denies it, acting like Sal is out of his freaking mind. Even I thought he was telling the truth, but good God, Sal just went off like a deaf Jack Russell, and there was just no getting him back in the car. Then right when I think things are about to get heated, with the guy being like, get out of my face, I told you who I am, now leave me alone, please, sir, Sal backs down. He says something like, you know what, I'm sorry, you're right, you just look like an old friend of mine and I got offended thinking you were trying to duck me, I apologize. Hey, no problem, the guy replied, obviously still bristling a little, just Jesus, listen to what people are telling you for Christ's sake, I don't want to fight anybody, you know? I know, I know, I, I apologize sincerely, I'm ashamed of myself, I really am. Sal says back. I used to get stuff like that a surprising amount. Not always from Sal, just weird little interactions with members of the public where it could either be hilarious or incredibly annoying, so I really didn't think too much of it. I just waited patiently, took the guy's money, and then wished him a nice night. Sal chimes in too, offering another apology, then we watch the guy walk out of the station. The second the door closes... The guy starts walking towards his car. Sal practically jumps into action. Not exactly Sonic the Hedgehog given his size, but he definitely waddled harder and faster than I'd ever seen before. Right as the guy is getting back into his car, I see Sal reaching into his waistband for something. Then bang, 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 bang. I see muzzle flashes. 
Then the guy's windshield is shattered. And then there's silence again. I just stand there for a second, frozen to the spot, unable to properly compute what I've just witnessed. Big Sal. Nice guy Sal. Sal who brings me leftovers and shoots the breeze with me when we're not roasting customers. He just killed a man. And he did it right in front of me. Sal didn't even look back. He just slid the gun back into his waistband and started walking over to the guy's car. When he got there, he opened up the driver's side door, shoved over the guy's body, then got in and drove the car out of the lot. The whole thing was said and done in a matter of seconds. I'm thinking, I need to call the cops as soon as I come to, as soon as I come out of shock. And this is back before I had a cell phone, so I ran into the back to use the gas station's phone. But as I'm running, a little thought pops into my head. Big Sal, Italian name, works at night, carries a gun, just shot a guy as coolly as I'd take out the trash. Holy mother of God, he's in the mafia. I'm standing there, phone in hand, wanting to call 911, but I couldn't bring myself to. All I could think of was, what if I call, and he's going to know. I couldn't have been a mafia witness. Going into witness protection and all that nonsense in my early 20s, are you kidding me? Look, I know I should have called the cops. But I was terrified. I hesitated. What else do you want me to say? The mob was a serious thing where I grew up. Not like it is now. And besides, Big Sal had left his car at the pumps. Like, surely he'd be coming back for it, and soon, considering what he'd just done. And think about it. He shows back up, sees the cop car outside. He's going to disappear and have me killed to keep me quiet. He knew so much about me too. Like we'd been talking all summer basically. He'd have been able to have dudes find me in like days if he wanted to. So, I'm standing there at the register, trying not to have a full-blown panic attack when Sal finally shows back up in a taxi. He's a change of clothes. His hair is still damp and... When he walked into the station, I almost choked on the amount of cologne he was wearing. Then he just walks up to the register, addresses me by name, and says, This is a robbery. I just look at him, like what? And he says it again. I said, This is a robbery. Then he pulls out a gun from his waistband and points it at me. Immediately I'm like, Holy Jesus, Sal. You don't gotta kill me, man. I swear I won't say anything. Hey, 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 hey. Calm down. I'm not gonna clip you. He replies. Just listen to me for Christ's sake, okay? Open the register and give me the money. I did as I was told, but I can't even really describe how confused I was. First he shoots somebody, and then he comes back to rob me. Why? Now, because I just robbed you, I'm going to need the tapes too. You catch my drift? He says. And suddenly I get it. He's trying to cover his tracks. I was visibly relieved, trembling as I let him into the back. See, kid. Now you're getting it. And this is your money too. I'm going to come back and give you your cut when this all blows over. I didn't say anything in response. I mean... What do you say to something like that? As I said, I'm calmed down a little bit, but I'm still screwed up for having just witnessed a shooting. Sal can obviously detect this, and I don't know how much of what he told me next is true, but this is what he said. He tells me everything's going to be fine and I shouldn't worry about covering for the guy he shot. According to Sal, this dude was a rat, turned state's evidence against his old capo back in the early 80s. Obviously, that meant the mob wanted him dead. But there was a twist, too. They wanted him dead way before he went all Benedict Arnold on them, because one of his associates ended up catching him at home with a 13-year-old girl. This made its way up to the boss of the family, and boom, the guy gets greenlit. He finds out, so to save his life, he turns into the star witness in a Rico case. After that, poof. He disappears. 
What was he doing back home, I don't know. Presumably he'd lost some weight or dyed his hair, maybe lost a little of his accent after living away for so long, but that didn't fool Sal, and it cost the guy his life. I didn't stick around to take my cut. I called up my boss to quit the very next day. I also kept my mouth shut when the cops came around to talk about the robbery. Well, I talked, but I gave Sal's version of the events. Guy in a mask came in, took the money, took the tapes, left. That seemed good enough for them, so after a while, the whole thing just went away. And I'm hoping it stays away too, because as much as I feel a weird, longing sense of guilt over the whole thing, I just want what's dead to stay buried. <laughs>